$500,000, but there's a huge chance that this case will go to the high court. So I have to raise a million dollars to fight for the right to say a man is not a woman. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So I wanted to give you some information on this Australian court case. A founder of an app for women has basically been taken to court and is set up to spend up to a million dollars, at least a million dollars fighting this case. Because some trans activists or some biological males were not happy that this is a women's only app. And this case highlights the danger of women only becoming a thing of the past or females only becoming a thing of the past. So Giggle was founded by business owner Sal Gova. She set the app up for women to discuss issues pertaining to women, to discuss issues that are important to women in a space that is free from men. Now this is something that was very important to her. She had had a career in Hollywood prior to setting up the app. And she went through some, you know, me too type of situations. And she was traumatized. She was left traumatized after her experience in Hollywood. So she decided that she wanted a space for women where they can discuss things that have happened to them. And obviously it's important that they were able to do that with other women who could relate to them as opposed to having males, you know, men on the app. Now she did initially open it to trans identified males, to biological males who identified as women. She did initially open the app to them, but she changed her mind and she has the right to do that. Now, just quickly tell us why, to answer the accusations of turf, why you decided that Giggle was only going to be for women and why you changed your policy in terms of yeah. trans women. Okay, so during the development of Giggle in 2019, when I was completely aware of what was happening in the rest of the world, I actually fought for trans women to be welcome onto the app. I was thinking of the you know women with gender dysphoria who have transitioned, I because I have no problem with these women, um, with these trans women, and so we 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 created onboarding so they wouldn't be misgendered. We really did everything we could to be as welcoming as possible. Then during the attack that was happening exactly this time last year. Um, the trans women that did get on, they wrote kill turf profiles, turfs need to be ripped, like every horrible mm. thing that you can imagine. Um, and so we very quickly sat around and educated ourselves of what was happening. And it just became incredibly evident that there was more than what was being told about this story. And that also women were really fighting for women's only spaces and women's language to stay for us. And so we made the decision that was like a no brainer. Of, of course, like we're going to, if we started out wanting to do something for women, we will continue doing something for women. So Sal is someone who comes from a liberal background. She doesn't have any particular political affiliations, but of course she's been accused of being a right winger because she goes on conservative outlets. Outlets that seem to be the only ones that allow her to tell her story. So she opened the app initially to everybody, including trans identified males. It became obvious that the rights pertaining to women were not the same as the rights pertaining to trans women. So she decided that she wanted the app to be strictly for females, to provide a safe space for them, to be free of trans identified males, some of whom had misogynistic tendencies. So she said even before the app was launched, there were trans women signing up, deciding that they wanted to be a part of it. Testing the waters, essentially. Ready to pounce. That's what it sounded like to me. I'm not sure exactly how the trans activists found us, but they did in that testing phase. And because we didn't have all of like the onboarding features set to how they were going to be for launch or anything, just we were inundated with thousands upon thousands of men who created profiles saying kill turfs and rape turfs and... Or not. And so that's how I was introduced to the term turf. And they left reviews on the app store and Google Play, like thousands of, of them saying, you know, you're transphobic and whatnot. So it was uh, the 7th of February, 2020. So just straight away, I was like, I have to find out what's going on. Like, this is insanity. So she was in her third trimester of pregnancy and she came to find out that she's being taken to court. A trans woman, Roxanne Tickle, the Human Rights Commission Act was cited and it was argued that not allowing biological males who identify as women onto the app was a violation of 
said person's human rights. Initially, Roxanne did get onto the app because Sal set the software at a medium level of, of strictness, I guess, as to prevent any actual females being denied access to the app. So she relaxed the settings a bit and obviously one or two trans people may slip through the net. So Roxanne did get onto the app, but when it became apparent that Roxanne was male, Sal saw the photo herself, I believe, and removed Roxanne from the app. And all hell broke loose, and now Sal is facing legal costs of up to $1 million, as this case is expected to go all the way to the High Court. So you're about to give birth, and now you're having to deal with a bunch of misogynist, trans-identified males, demanding that they be allowed into spaces that are for women and women only. So Roxanne is seeking damages, a written apology, and access to Giggle. I personally don't go where I'm not wanted, but for a women's only space, for a male to decide that they are gonna force women to allow them into those spaces, you can't tell me that's not misogynistic. You can't tell me that that's not a form of coercion. And they're using the courts, they're using the government to harass women as far as I'm concerned. And this brings up the question of women's rights versus the rights of people who identify as women, who aren't biologically women, who aren't biologically female, but claim to be so. Where do we draw the line? And this case is so important. The outcome of this case is so important. It's not just going to affect Australia. We're seeing this happen all over the West. But if we're not careful, women's only is going to be a thing of the past. Now, I've spoken about homeless shelters that are specifically for women being open to biological males. Giggle is an app for all women. The only qualification is that biologically, you be a woman. Now, if a man decides that he wants to identify as a woman, he can express himself however he chooses to, but that doesn't make him a woman. And if anything, I believe that forcing males onto female-only apps is actually discriminating against women. And this is what we're seeing today. We've seen sororities being infringed upon. Sororities, which have always been for women. They have a male version, fraternities. But when it comes to men who want to identify as women, they're now infringing upon sororities. And it has practical implications. It's not just about them being in a sorority by name. It's also them being in the house, them being in the showers, them being in the bathrooms. These have practical implications and these have led to the safety of women being threatened too. Safety also extends to being online because you could be harassed and bullied online. So that's why it's so important that women's only spaces be honored because women who have been through trauma of certain kinds, they need to be able to know that women only means women only. I mean, I've even seen where women only nights are being attacked now like women only nights at swimming pools, gyms. Those things are going to be a thing of the past if this is not nipped in the bud now. If the courts don't define what a woman is, then there is no women only anything. And it's interesting, men only apps or men only spaces, they're not infringed upon by trans men. Anywhere near to the same extent, men's spaces, men's apps, they're pretty much left alone. So there's a problem with how they interpret female in Australia when it comes to laws pertaining to discrimination. So in 2013, the then Prime Minister, Julian Gillard, a female, a woman, she decided to include identification in the whole bracket of protecting women against discrimination. She decided to extend it to simply identity. Carl, I can't remember the last time a bunch of women protested at any trans or pride event, but it happens the other way all the time now. Yes, that's right, Peter. It seems that um, actual women, women like you, me and Moira, have less rights than trans women. And Peter, it's really important to keep reminding everyone out there watching at home how this happened. This happened because of Julia Gillard's government when they amended the Sex Discrimination Act in 2013 and deleted the meaning of the word 
woman. They repealed the meaning of the word woman. They took it out of the act. So that's who we have to blame. You know, Julia Gillard, who everyone holds up as a the feminist icon, she is responsible and her government is responsible for leaving women in the situation that we currently are. What is the argument you are going to put to the court? So the initial claim was uh, gender identity discrimination, and now it's gender identity and intersex discrimination. So it's sort of ever evolving. But this case is about sex. It's not about gender. I discriminated on the basis of sex. A woman is an adult human female. And that was accepted by everybody until men decided that they wanted to be women. And the only way for a female-only space to exist is if it excludes males. So we're going to be arguing that. And then also um, that CEDAW, which was created to protect women from all forms of discrimination, does not cite gender identity as an innate attribute um, of being a woman. Which is now, all basically I, a fancy way of saying men are not women. This is not an organization that claims that, that trans women are women and our Sex Discrimination Act is based on this. So that's where part of where our constitutional argument comes in. If we win that constitutional argument in the High Court, it would mean that gender is taken out of the Sex Discrimination Act. So it would mean that sex is, once again, the defining factor of the Sex Discrimination Act, which is what a stupid sentence to have to say. But... It would mean that female-only spaces were female again, female-only sports, and male-only spaces as well, because I think that men deserve privacy and dignity in male spaces as well. Um, it would mean that self-ID was off the table. It would, it, would just, it would just end it. Sal's legal team are arguing that her case is not about gender, it's about sex, and upholding the rights of those who are biologically female. So we have people like Rachel Wong, who was a women's rights activist. She said that this case will highlight the conflict between sex and gender. And she said it will help determine whether sex, biological sex, is a protected attribute. At some point, biological sex has to count for something. At some point, the courts are gonna to have to decide whether or not they're going to acknowledge that. Or are they only gonna to cater to people's feelings? I feel that I'm a woman, that I should get the same rights, the same access to women's spaces that females get. This is where it's going to all come to a head. So Sal tried to get the case thrown out. That was the initial first step. And unfortunately in June, the case was dismissed. So they failed to get the case thrown out. So it is continuing to go further on along the legal process, costing more money. There was an option for mediation, but Roxanne was asking for, you know, all males to be allowed onto the app, an apology and that Sal undergoes a sex versus gender education, or shall we say, a re-education class. And no surprises there, Sal declined. Anyone's a written apology and um, all men who claim to be women on the app, um, in, in court he's going for money as well for damages, but in initial human rights complaint he wasn't. The, the conditions for me to go to conciliation were that I'd have to him on the app, all men who claim to be women on the app, um, an apology, attend sex and gender education, which could only be re-education because I am very educated on this issue. Like I can teach <laughs> death well. And then the other thing was um, that they wanted me to mod uh, moderate all content on the app so that like men like him would not be offended because basically there are a lot of women just turfing out on there and talking about their rights. And because of course they can, they can go and talk about them without trans activists, men male trans activists getting abused. Now, a female trans activist would be welcome to come onto the app um, so long as she was civil and didn't harass and just abided by the rules. Like you don't, there's no like thought control or anything. No one has to agree with everything, but I mean, they basically stayed away from it. It was only the men who were trying to get on. So I said no to conciliation because I knew that I was never going to agree to those terms. And then also by this point, I was like third trimester pregnancy and I didn't, with the stress of it, I was, I'm not putting myself through it. Not going to happen. And so we said no to it and knowing that the risk could be that he'd take it to federal court. So then he had 60 days to file. He filed on the 61st day, uh, or the 60th day, but just how the days felt was, felt was the 61st. Then he withdrew about a month later, which we were like, oh, 
basically that's a win. Like we've won this. And then he refiled again about five and a half months later, like at Christmas time last year. So this person waits to the last minute to file papers, to continue with the legal process, basically adding to people's stress, playing games in my opinion, making the situation a lot worse. And I'm sure this person is enjoying this whole process, getting a kick out of it, enjoying the attention, enjoying all the people back in this case in their favor, making demands. I'm sure they're really enjoying it because that seems to be a trait with these trans identified males who want to infringe upon women's spaces. They enjoy the attention. So hopefully this case resolves the issue of biological sex versus identity. At some point, biological sex has to trump identity. Depends on how woke <laughs> the court system is. Depends how the law is applied. So let's get behind Sal and support her as much as we can in this case. And let's hope that women's spaces, female only, women only, can be saved. Because at this point, any male can decide that they want to infringe upon those spaces. And time will tell whether the courts are going to allow that. So thanks for watching. Let me know what you think. Share your thoughts below. And God willing, I will see you in the next video.